I lived in the old Brindavan farm, which was on the other side of the mountain. And I had to go all the way every evening to see Srila Prabhupada. I had to climb down, because I was Pujari. I had to climb down a mountain, across a small river, and then climb up a mountain, and then come to Prabhupada. Every day, as I was climbing up, there was a rose bush. And one beautiful, fully blossomed rose would be there every day. It was like a miracle. And I would pick that rose, and I would always bring it. And when I would come, Srila Prabhupada would sit on his Vyasasana. I would offer that rose at his lotus feet. And oftentimes, when he would be lecturing, he would pick up that rose and just hold it in his hand. And I remember one day, he was holding that rose I offered him, and he was smelling it. And he was looking at it, and he gave an example. He said, just like this rose is a flower, he had a garland of marigolds. He said, these are also flowers. He says, but still, this is a rose. Although they are both flowers, still the rose is the best of flowers. And he said, similarly, we are all simultaneously one and different than Krishna. Although we are one with Krishna, still Krishna is Krishna. Krishna is the rose. He gives this example of a chintya beda beda shakti, <coughs> chintya beda beda tattva. Another time, I remember during those evening darshans, I was feeling a little guilty because I had lost my counting beads. And I was chanting my 16 rounds. And in Nubrindavan in those days, it was not easy to get counting beads or anything. So I was chanting my 16 rounds. But on that particular day, the only day I can ever remember in my life at that point, that I wasn't sure whether I finished my rounds or not. So as I was sitting just a few feet from Srila Prabhupada's Vyasasana, the thought came to my mind that I'm not sure whether I finished my rounds today. Just when I thought that, Srila Prabhupada looked right at me. He just stared at me very sincerely. Because during the darshan, when he wasn't talking to people, he'd be chanting japa. He looked at me, and he held up his bead bag. And he took one of his counting beads and very meticulously and slowly and deliberately, he pulled it down like this, and then went like, and he was looking at me right at that time. And I was thinking, Srila Prabhupada wants me to get counting beads. Srila <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada wants to make absolutely sure that there can be no compromise, that we, that we properly chant our 16 rounds every day. One evening, devotees assembled for the night darshan. And it was very cold, and it was raining that night. And Srila Prabhupada's secretary, who was then pushed to Krishna Maharaj, he came out, and he told us that Srila Prabhupada will not be giving darshan tonight. <clears throat> we were all gathered at the front door of the house. And we were very sad that we wouldn't be able to have Srila Prabhupada's most precious association that night. So we all started walking away. And somehow Prabhupada, through another window in the house, saw how despondent we were when we were walking away. So he told Pushta Krishna that call them in, because usually he was outside. So he called us and said, Srila Prabhupada wants you to come in. He'll give you darshan. So we all came into this living room. We were all crowded in, and we were sitting down. And then Srila Prabhupada came out, and he was very, very ill that night. He just sat with his hand in his head like this. And he asked Prajumana to read from Srimad Bhagavatam, 12th canto, about the symptoms of Kali Yuga. And it was announced that he would not speak that night. We would just be able to sit with him and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So Pradyumna started to read some of the symptoms of Kali Yuga. And Prabhupada was sitting. And I remember 
he became so enlivened to hear Veda Vyasa's descriptions of what will come in Kali Yuga that every time he read a symptom, Srila Prabhupada, he just all of a sudden became free of all of his sickness and dynamic and full of joy. He began to explain. Like I remember, he said, people will, people who are living, people will travel long, long places just to go to place of pilgrimage. This is the symptom of Kali. And Prabhupada said, yes, just like today. People are living in Calcutta, and they are on the bank of the Ganges, and they will go through so much trouble to go all the way to Hardwar just to bathe in the Ganges. He said, similarly, you are in New Vrindavan. New Vrindavan is non different than Vrindavan. He said, you have no need to go anywhere. Vrindavan is here, and Krishna is here. And all of the devotees became very happy. <laughs> And then they read the, Prajumana read about how a symptom of Kali will be beauty will be seen by how long one grows his hair. And Prabhupada said, yes, you see, Veda Vyas, he could see past, present, and future. He said at the time when he wrote this Srimad Bhagavatam, there was no hippie movement, but he knew the hippie movement would come. <laughs> and then he began to explain how Srimad Bhagavatam was the perfect scripture, because it was written by Veda Vyas who had perfect realization and who had perfect vision of past, present, and future, and perfect vision of Krishna. So in this way, what, what originally appeared to be a very despondent night of just going away without Prabhupada became the most wonderful